So uh, yeah, so I was just saying, so the last session is going to be about money management, obviously, which is uh, very important in the current financial climate. So I'm very pleased to welcome to the stage, Joseph Modeski. All right. Thank you, Richard, for that introduction. Just met about 15 minutes ago, and I already feel like we have a great connection and love the bow tie also. Um, so, very happy to be here. Obviously, the first thing I have to start out by doing is, uh, number one, thanking uh, Patrick, Susan, Carla, just for having us here and, and putting on a, a great event here. Um, first time here, hope to be back. Uh, wanted to also, of course, thank my team, which some of you have had the pleasure of meeting over the past few days. So, Jeff, Lucy, Mark back there, doing a great job. Uh, and of course, last but not least, I have to thank all of you for actually sitting in here at 3.30 on a Friday afternoon in Fort Myers and listening to me uh, and all of you online watching for just dealing with me on a Friday afternoon. Uh, so, all good to go there? Wonderful, thank you so much. So, uh, as Richard said, I'm here to talk to you about financial planning, uh, money management, you know, tons of synonyms you can use there. So, a lot of deliberation went into figuring out what specifically we wanted to cover today, what I wanted to touch on. Obviously, there's a lot of different things I could have covered, but I think the biggest thing was just how we plan to look at the full picture. And there was a few select questions I wanted to make sure I was raising to all of you to think about, maybe not specifically answer just from this 30-minute talk, of course, um, but for you to take away and, and hopefully, you know, have conversations about it, talk to us about it. So those questions were obviously, number one, what actually is financial planning? What is true financial planning? What does that look like? How do you go about doing that? Uh, two was, why should, uh, why should you do that with Northwestern Mutual? Why are we here? Why did Susan and Carla and, and Epic reach out to us to be here and chat with all of you? Uh, and the third, of course, is why should you care about it at all, right? Um, so looking at what is financial planning, uh, what I have, and actually, could, could somebody run my bucket up here for me? I, I forgot my bucket. Mark, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you so much. Just a quick pause, everybody. So if you had the chance to pop over to our table the last couple of days, you will have seen, as we went with the beach theme, our nice little sand bucket here. Uh, and we had a question on here that I wanted to ask all of you first before... I got up here and tried to tell you what financial planning actually is. Uh, so I asked everybody, what does financial planning mean to you? And what I'd love to do now is randomly pull out a few of your answers and read them aloud to the crowd, anonymously, of course. Uh, so let's, let's take a look here. All right, so first one, amazing. I really wanted to pull something like this out. Having enough money for next weekend's bar tab. Quite a kickoff there. So that's number one. Um, let's see. Uh, live fast, die young, and leave a beautiful corpse. That's awesome. Let's do a few more here. I am loving your takes on financial planning so far. Oh, we're just hitting them hard here. Not having to call my dad for financial advice anymore. That is fantastic. Uh, let's do two more. Retiring comfortably enough to travel, being able to retire by age 60, even if I don't. I like that one. And last, security. One word. I like that answer. So I could keep going and read all of these to you, but I think the beauty of this and what I hope you're all picking up is that every one of these is the right answer. Financial planning is to you what you want it to be. Now, of course, there is a certain way to go about it, but the whole reason you go about it is to make sure that it is unique to you in each of your individual situations, lives, families, and things like that. So if you're taking a look at the screen, what I wanted to touch on here are what are some of the aspects of holistic, in-depth financial planning? So one of the things we hear a lot is, well, of course, you know, Joe, Jeff, everybody, we want to save for retirement, right? That's a biggie. We hear that a lot. What does that mean? 
what is retirement to you? Have you asked yourself that question? What you want retirement to look like when you want to retire? Is retirement sitting on the couch and doing nothing all day because you get a break for working for 40 years? Or is it actual financial freedom, having control over your time and your money? What do you want that to look like? When do you want it to happen? Asking yourself those types of questions and then figuring out how to get there. Another one, which can go hand in hand, but we hear a lot is obviously investing my money, making sure my money is growing, you know, building my wealth. Again, what do you want that to be? Why are you doing that? Ask yourself those questions. Is it strictly just saving for retirement? Is there nothing you want to do between now and 65? Is it investing for your family? Do you want to pay for your kids to go to college? Do you want to have a beach house one day before you retire? Do you want to go on vacations every year? Asking yourself these types of questions are, is what gives you the answers and allows us to work with you to figure out how to actually achieve these goals, as opposed to just, you know, chucking your money into the market or buying a fund or, you know, just saying, hey, I heard this on this podcast, so I think I'm good to go. Uh, shifting out from that, again, looking at full holistic financial planning is, of course, also looking at the security side of things. So that was one of these uh, notes that somebody put down. So protecting my family. Again, obviously there we're touching on things like life insurance. But have we ever asked ourselves what life insurance is and why it actually exists? What does it cover? Do I have enough life insurance? What am I, why do I have my life insurance? What is it there to cover? Do I need to replace my income if I'm no longer around? Do I still want my kids and my family to have the same opportunities they would have had if I wouldn't still be, or if I wasn't around, or if I was still around, if I was still alive? Uh, so diving into these questions, getting a full introspective answer as to how much insurance you need, how it works, and what you're actually using it for within your plan for both yourself and your family are questions you should be asking and you should be getting the answer to from someone, not naming any names. Um, Protecting your income. Uh, th this is a very unique one for, for this group. Uh, myself and, and my partner, Jeff, we, we do a ton of work in the medical industry. So obviously I specialize working primarily with perfusionists. Uh, Jeff works with a lot of physicians and surgeons and you know that branches out to nurses and anesthesiologists and everyone. Um, you all have, you know, in this industry, very unique skills, very unique knowledge around what you do. It's very niche, it's very specialized. So there are a lot of things that can happen that could take that ability away. Uh, and you know, there's some people I know in this room, there's some people here at Sanibel, there's some people watching online that either already work with myself, already work with Northwestern Mutual. Um, and I know some of you in here who do work with Northwestern Mutual are, are in fantastic hands. Um, but when you're looking at myself, as a financial planner, right? Of course, it's great to be here up on this podium talking to you, but I always tell people, look, as long as I can talk and formulate words, like I can keep working. I technically might not be disabled if something bad happens, but you all know that your hands, your minds, the things that you know and the way that you go about saving lives is very unique. There's, there's a very small percentage of people on this planet that can do what you do. So make sure that those unique skills and that care that you have for your patients, you can have the financial side of that protected because I'm sure all of you didn't get here easily and I'm sure you don't deal with your call schedules for fun. You do it obviously to help people and secondly, to provide for yourself and your family. So make sure you're actually protecting your income. Make sure you understand what that looks like and make sure you know unequivocally if anything were to happen no matter what, that there's still a paycheck coming in the door, that you're supporting yourself, your family, and you're still saving for your goals and still investing and doing all the things that you want to do regardless. And last but not least, oh, you have a big one, managing debt. I had to double check the order. I didn't want to mess it up and look like a, a fool up here. So managing debt, uh, we get a ton of questions about as well. Again, I think that in itself opens up some questions for people. What is debt management, right? I'm sure all of you, a lot of you in here have heard, and a lot of you watching online, that debt is bad. All debt is bad. It's not good to have debt. Debt weighs on you. Debt takes away opportunities to do things. Is that true? 
You know, financially, is that true? Mathematically, is that true? What is good debt? What is bad debt? How do I properly manage it? How do I make sure that I'm, yes, keeping up with debt and keeping a healthy balance sheet, but not sacrificing too much time or sacrificing my youth to go out and have fun or to continue to invest or provide for my family or save the way I need to save uh, and not feel like my debt is crippling? Because I can let you all in on a little secret. A lot of debt and a lot of debt management is much more mental than it is financial. It's not just the numbers on the page. So asking yourself these questions is very important. Uh, and then finally, I know all of you in here have a passion for helping people. I know that's why you do what you do. And that's probably, I would be willing to guess, for most of you, hopefully, and in one line, your favorite part of what you do. But a lot of people ask them, hey, what's your second favorite part of your job? And most of those people say, well, it's my paycheck. I like getting a paycheck every two weeks or every month or twice a month. And I like having that stability and knowing that money's coming in the door. I'm guessing all of you here and everybody listening online do not want that to change at any point. You would love to get a paycheck for the rest of your life and have those basics always covered, whether you're 18 or you're 100. How do you go about doing that? How do you plan to have guaranteed lifetime income? Is that social security? Do we know if Social Security will be around forever? Do we know what that will look like? Do we actually want to rely completely on the federal government for our guaranteed money in retirement? Uh, does your company offer a pension? Do pensions even exist? How do they work? What does that look like? And then if those two aren't what you need, what else is out there? How can you figure out yourself to create that paycheck for the rest of your life? Especially, obviously, some of the younger generation who... Uh, we are, you know, one of the first generations that they predict might have to handle retirement completely on our own. And we might have to create those guarantees for ourselves. So, again, looking at this, and, and it's an awesome infograph, and if there's any mountain climbers or rock climbers in here, I'm sure it looks great for you. But truly integrating all of these things, looking at the full picture, not just investing, not just the S&P 500, not just any one of these things, is what true financial planning is and understanding that and if you if any of the questions i just asked in the last five minutes you can't answer right now or you don't have the answer to or you're working with somebody or you know you have a guy or you have a gal and they're not asking you these questions and making sure the answers to them are concrete then we should chat and you should ask more questions and, and you should maybe think hey Maybe I'm doing some great things and maybe I'm on a good path, but maybe I'm not on the best path that I could be. And maybe I need to ask more questions and make sure that I actually have a full financial plan and not just something that's piecemeal together that I hope will work out in the end. Uh, so moving forward, we could skip ahead on that one. It's okay. I don't know we got. Plenty, plenty of pages. One more. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Oh, perfect. Can't cover financial planning in one page. That's for sure. All right. So if you care about financial planning and it's important to you, why Northwestern Mutual? Why do we stand out again? Why are we here? What does that mean? Uh, so there is new science that exists. And, you know, us at Northwestern Mutual, we, we've been doing this planning the way that we do it for 167 years. And we love it. And we've been working with everybody for a long time on trying to complete full financial planning. Uh, but in the last few years, again, there has been some new science developed that has pretty much unequivocally and statistically proven that the approach that we have to holistic integrated financial planning uh, does produce the best outcomes. So just a few years ago, uh, there's a company by the name of Ernst & Young. Hopefully some of you may have heard of that. If you have any friends or family in accounting, I'm sure they know who Ernst & Young is. But Ernst & Young is a world-renowned financial um, accounting and research firm. So they completed a study a few years back, uh, a, a white page study. Now, I will say I do have the full study in this presentation, and I will more than happily send it to all of you. And I know all of you would love for me to sit here for the next three hours and go through all of it, all the data. I know perfusionists love data and I love data as well, but for my sake and for your sake to get out of here at a good time and get down to the pool, 
I'm just going to summarize it for you. So essentially, what Ernst & Young looked at was just how truly dire the financial situation in our country and in our economy is. Um, so if you look on here and just this first paragraph, uh, by 2030, so we're looking at six years out, the total financial uh, gap that's going to exist in our country, both with retirement, which is actually saving enough to have to properly and comfortably retire, and then also protection. So having enough to protect your family, create a legacy, generational wealth, all that, uh, that's going to be a total of close to $400 trillion by 2030 in the next seven years that we're going to hit. Uh, so obviously they said, hey, there is work that needs to be done, and we would like to find out where people need to go to complete this work. Where can people turn to to solve these issues and change the trajectory of our finances you know, as a whole? Uh, so basically what Ernst & Young, what the study entailed was they looked at several different ways to actually financially plan. Uh, so, and they're described here, I'm not going to go too much in depth, but of course they looked at some more common strategies that I'm sure you've heard of, which is focusing on investments and, and worrying strictly about ROI, return on interest, and what you're getting in your S&P 500 fund or whatever that may be. Uh, and they looked at a bunch of different options. And then the last option they looked at was, you know, quote unquote, the Northwestern Mutual way, which is, hey, what if you use all the tools in the toolbox? What if you truly integrate and use everything at your disposal properly, uniquely to your situation, and build a plan that way? That involves both investments, a properly built insurance strategy, and a properly built guaranteed lifetime income strategy so that you're never without a paycheck. So I'm going to skip forward here quite a few pages just because, again, I want to not keep you guys here all night. Uh, and I'm going to get to the summary here. So what Ernst & Young discovered through this study and what the data showed them uh, was that the Northwestern Mutual, North, Northwestern Mutual approach, excuse me, the way we do integrated planning, statistically, again, regardless of advertising or what podcast you've seen or you know what Instagram financial guru you've watched, regardless of all that, we were on top. We came out with the best strategy to approach planning and produce statistically and fundamentally the best results. And that's pretty awesomely summarized right here. I'm sure some of those blue lines are some words that you guys will like to see. So uh, first and foremost, obviously what they found is that our approach, which again, integration of investments, proper insurance strategies, and long-term income, guaranteed income, produced better financial outcomes. Uh, people were able in these studies that they did to retire with more money and spend more money and, and build a bigger retirement uh, life and have more flexibility and control over when and how they wanted to retire and reach that financial freedom stage. Uh, and then also on top of that, not only were they able to accumulate more and spend more, they were also able to die with more and create more legacy and create better generational wealth to really start to get at that $400 trillion gap that a lot of us right now, if we don't do anything, are going to leave behind for our kids and grandkids to deal with as it continues to grow. Uh, they also found that permanent life insurance, uh, which is a conversation that I would love to go in depth with each of you, so I hope we can at another time because it will take more than 30 minutes, uh, but they found that permanent life insurance plus investments, which are part of building and a, a guaranteed long time uh, lifetime income strategy actually performed better than the other strategies that were looking at higher rates of return uh, early on and looking at being more aggressive because that's what you hear a lot is I got to get a good rate of return. I got to get, you know, my money growing as quickly as possible. Um, and they found that, hey, going about the correct way, right? And, and, and it's funny to me to think about it, but as you know, unsexy as it sounds, it's very much tortoise versus hare analogy here. Uh, big picture, there was no better way to do it than this. Uh, again, I touched on this, but it created the most flexibility in people's plannings. Again, this really ties back to the true essence of financial planning, which is there is really no wrong answer for what you want it to mean to you. 
But whatever you do want it to mean, it's up to you and your planner to create that flexibility and to make sure you are going about the proper way so that you can actually achieve the goals that you want for yourself, your family, any, anybody else. Uh, and then, of course, I had to save the, the, the cherry on top, I think, of everything. Uh, it was the most tax efficient strategy by far. Um, and I know this is a big question that a lot of people brought up who met with us and a lot of, you know, we had a lot of questions about, but hey, what, what is your tax strategy? Are, are you properly handling taxes both today, but also creating an effective long-term tax mitigation strategy so that when you do retire and you think you have enough, you know, a large percentage of it doesn't have to go back to Uncle Sam, right? Um, so, Again, I will send out the study and it is fantastic. But again, I just wanted to show you some of the data. I had to give you a taste because again, I know you all love the data. Uh, so basically just to summarize, this is uh, some of the results of the study. And I, I will also point out a small disclaimer. Uh, the study itself used uh, industry averages for things like annuities and permanent life insurance creating these strategies. They didn't actually use specific Northwestern Mutual products and the, the performance that we have as, you know, a, a top insurance company in the world. Uh, so the outcome of those applying our products actually was even better than what I'm showing you here. But to summarize the study, again, I think uh, this, this page and the page I'll show you next kind of speak for itself. Um, you're looking at a 45 year old couple saving 20% per year. And again, they didn't save any more or differently uh, in each of the different methods, they same the same exact amount, just put it in different places. Uh, again, not only they were able to accumulate more over the long term, but they were also able to retire with more, significantly more, and spend more throughout retirement and create by far the most tax efficient and largest legacy that they could for their families. Uh, and this was for a 45 year old couple. And then if we look at a 25 year old couple, uh, that gap continues to grow. So again, anybody here, anybody watching, uh, if you are a younger perfusionist, a new professional, and you're either at the pool right now and might watch this after, this is for you. Um, the younger you plan and the more proactive you are with your planning, obviously the better the outcomes are going to be. Uh, that's not to say that it's too late for anybody at all. I talked to a lot of you that kind of have that inclination. Oh, you know, maybe it is. It's not you know, we do work with anybody and everybody. But again, you know, I work with a lot of younger perfusionists. I work with a lot of students after graduating who are like, hey, you know, I'm barely an adult. So why should I care about this? This is why you should care about it. Because statistically and financially, there is no better way to achieve your goals and have truly what you want. And also be able to do it in a way working with Northwestern Mutual that Frankly, from what I've seen in my years, it's just easy. I mean, you, you all in here and everybody watching online, you, you guys have a tough career, right? Uh, I've been working with Perfusionists now for, uh, you know, four years, and I've heard a lot of stories and I've seen a lot. I mean, call schedules ain't no joke, right? Um, you just, most of you, whether you want to or not, you sometimes just don't have time to divvy up everything that you want to, you know, be with your family and give everything you have to your career and then worrying about building a financial plan and making sure you're on track for the things that you want. So to summarize again, and I've touched on this, I think theme a few times throughout this, this last 25, 30 minutes. Why do you care? I mean, it's, it's only your money, right? It's only the rest of your life. Uh, so again, looking at what financial planning is, I think to summarize and, and wrap this up is that Financial planning for each and every one of you is so much more than numbers on a page. It's so much more than what return you're getting in your portfolio. It's so much more than any of that. It is evolving your life and figuring out what it truly means to you. What does it do for you? What does it do for your family? What does it do for your children? What do you want it to mean? How do you want what plan you're building to translate to real life? And if you can't answer those questions, then we would like to help you answer them. Um, so I think uh, I was asked to do a, a Q&A, like a panel. 
but uh, I think for everybody's sake, we're just gonna move the impromptu Q&A to the pool after I'm done. So once we're all in bathing suits, no question is off limits. So you guys can feel free to uh, come down and ask us whatever you'd like and have a drink with us. Um, but again, following up from this, I've met quite a few of you here. You've all been fantastic. Each and every one of you in this room uh, would love to follow up, would love to talk to you more. And again, make sure that you are financially planning truly and make sure that you are on track to achieve the goals that you have. And I think that's it for me. Thank you.